Good morning, good morning, good morning, everyone. Hold on a second. Welcome to another episode of Spilling Tea. I am your host, Tiffany Daniels, and we're going back to that horrible world known as the JRC this morning. But before we do the usual disclaimers, I'm going to be as quick as I possibly can, folks. I got to be up at the dentist by 8.30, okay? You are going to see the link to this public statement right there in the description box, alongside the other pertinent links to the Stop the Shocks campaign, including Autistic Hoya's massive archive on the subject, the templates, and the ever-present self-explanatory change.org Shut the Judge Rotenberg Center Down petition. Folks, when we talk about the JRC, you're going to hear vivid descriptions of and catch clips of surveillance footage of people with disabilities being tortured and abused. Got young children present. Please use your headphones, all right? Okay. It's early morning. I have to go fast. So if I snubble over my words, my apologies in advance, I will try, try to keep my ranting down to a minimum. So here we go. Non-speakers can consent or revoke consent, period. GRC cites the following from Neuroclastic as defamatory and false. Proponents of the GRC argue that use of the GED is used with consent, but built into GRC's structure is the systematic stripping of consent to ensure the resident being admitted cannot say no. And all of JRC's residents are capable of consent, even in absence of having access to using words as communication. So what this means is that the JRC will have these individuals taken to court, have their autonomy stripped from them and their parents, basically removes parents' rights as the child's guardian, gives it over to a court-appointed guardian who then consents on the behalf of the student to subject them to this torture. It's a fucking cartel, folks. I've been down this rabble hole. So that's what they're talking about here. And they're saying that they all their means to be able to remove their consent is removed from the child. There is no consent. Moving on. Cease and desist letter from the JRC to Neuroclastic. The letter substantiates this as defamation with the following justification. Under Massachusetts law, applicable to all extraordinary treatment, including antipsychotic medication, an individual with a diagnosed mental illness that renders them unable to make informed medical decisions provides or withholds consent to the probate court using substituted judgment standard. Again, This is how they get away with this shit. They bring them in, basically coming in strapped down with face masks on like we're fucking Hannibal Lecter in Silence of the Lambs before the judges start exaggerating every single one of our faults to make us seem incompetent. And then which our human Fucking rights are then systematically stripped away from us one by one in alphabetical order. So no, they're saying, but it's legal that we can do this. Just because it's legal, GRC in Massachusetts does not make it fucking right. And if you think for one second, I believe those guardians are looking out for the best interests of that child. I don't know what you on, but it must be some good shit. See Mass General Laws 190B 5-30-8-0-6-A. GRC does not strip its clients of consent and that statement is false. No, it's not. They do strip them of consent. When you take away someone's autonomy, remove guardianship of the parent, Display it on a completely uninterested third party so that they can then overrule what you want and do it on behalf, on your behalf to the child. That is stripping consent. Okay? 
If you don't believe me, media, go fucking ask Britney Spears what that shit is like. All right? We just had a big fucking huge example of exactly what the JRC does. So don't feed me your bullshit. You don't script. You do not remove consent. That is exactly what you do. Neuroclastic cited JRC's official policy. Nathan Blinkish, JRC Director of Clinical Services, explains how the process of revoking the right to consent works here. We're going to end on this one, folks, because i got to be calling for the taxi here soon. Once the use of adversive interventions is added to the student's IEP, the individual court process in Massachusetts can be started. Typically, JRC initiates the process by filing a guardianship petition and proposed treatment plan for Massachusetts probate court and request for a hearing. Right there. Does that sound like they give a damn whether the kid consents or not? Yeah, me too. Me too. The 2021 use of the students in IEP would imply to most reasonable people that children are being subjected to shock as an IEP individual education plan does not extend beyond high school graduation. Neuroclastic did not allege that the practice is illegal. We're alleging that it is inhumane and undermines the rights of disabled individuals to access consent or revoke consent. Exactly. We advocate that it should be made illegal. We expanded on our position. And we'll go ahead and get on to that tomorrow. We're going to close up here. We don't get very many views on this channel. The few that we do get do tend to get removed from time to time. So please don't forget to hit that like button, hit subscribe. Don't forget to hit the comments. I do appreciate your time this morning. And as always, we here at Spilling Tea hope you have a good one. Bye-bye, everyone.